Hello my friends, William Poloniak here again from Whole Health Foundation. In the juice I'm making today, I have an anti-inflammatory juice formula that will nurture the spine cord and all the nerves in your body. For this anti-inflammatory juice and spine cord um, nurturing juice, in addition to about 50% carrots, I have a burdock root, otherwise known as goba root, one leek plant, some celery, one small romaine lettuce plant, this is um, lamb's quarters, and lamb's quarters is normally known as a weed, but it's a sign that your soil is in good condition if you have this growing in your garden. I also have one dandelion plant. I have here some broccoli leaves. Now broccoli leaves you cannot buy in a grocery store. You must grow the broccoli yourself and harvest the leaves. I also have one large beet, a couple of avocado pits, one whole head of garlic, about 50% more ginger than I would normally use. I would normally use about that much, so I have about 50% more. And I have about 50% more turmeric root. This is 150 grams of turmeric. Normally I would use about 100 grams. So there's my ingredients. So let's make some juice. Before I start making juice, I want to explain that I'm using the near zero blowback cutter and a front loading feed tube. And one reason I like the front loading feed tube is you can actually see what you're doing. And as you feed your produce in, you have a little more control than doing it from the top on the regular feed tube. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like using the regular feed tube. I'll set this aside, put the regular feed tube on, the production model feed tube. And as you can see, with the ordinary feed tube, you feed in from the top, you'd have to lean over to see what's going on. We can modify any feed tube to create a front-loading feed tube if anyone is interested. So let's show you now. I'm going to take the camera and give you an eyeball view of what's going on so you can see why I favored the front loading feed tube. Now I'm going to show you why I favored the front loading feed tube. As you can see, you can look right into the feed tube and see exactly what's going on and it enables you to have a little more control over your produce as you feed it in. So you can feed it in a little more slowly instead of drop it in as you're tempted to do from the top. And there you have the front loading feed tube and the near zero cutter. I'd like to remind you that the first thing I'm going to do is plug in my thermometer and cool the cutter down with three ice cubes. I'm going to start with dandelion greens. it's a good idea to clean the grid often no matter what cutter you're using so we'll clean the greens pulp off both sides of the grid put it back in and continue let's do a little more broccoli Carrots. 
I finish, I want to mention when you're on your last two carrots, it takes some pulse to put it inside the feed tube because there's always a plug of carrot or other produce in here and you want to force it through and make sure everything is shred. Now my next step is to clean the grid in the feed tube and the cutter and mix my produce and make some juice. And I just absolutely love this front-loading feed tube. It's not necessary if you're careful and you're happy with the top-loading feed tube, but the front-loading feed tube is much more comfortable to use. And if you're interested in buying one, give me a phone call and we'll talk about a trade-in. And my last step before folding this into cloths and pressing juice is to mix it thoroughly, as you can see. And next we'll get some cloths out of the freezer and make some juice. So now I'm going to demonstrate my six cloth less work method. The first step is to put three ladles full of pulp in a cloth, fold it over in thirds, pat it down, pat it down, fold it in thirds again, and I'm going to set it aside and press two cloths at once. Get better pressure that way. these first two cloths, put it in the press. Now this is very important. Center it left to right. Center it front to back and reach in the here if you can to adjust it. All the way back, back it off a little bit. And we'll continue filling cloths with pulp. Here's my less work six cloth method. This goes forward, this goes over, and the spent cloths go on top. Two more cloths in the press. Centered left to right. Centered front to back, adjusted if necessary, all the way back, back it off a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do with this pulp, if there's a puddle of juice in the tray, in the pulp bowl, you crush this up and put it in the puddle of juice to absorb that liquid because we're going to um, reuse that. And I'm going to show you another less work six cloth method where we don't put the pulp back in. So this folds over in thirds, flatten it, set it aside. The other method is to put new pulp on top of the old pulp, but only two scoops, not three, because this patty is going to get thicker and thicker. So on your last cloth, advance that all the way. Put it into a tight package, the tighter the better. This goes forward, this goes over. The spent cloths go on top. And we're going to continue now with the less work six cloth method. Make sure the tray's on securely. Centered left to right, centered front to back, adjust it if necessary, all the way back. Back it off a little bit. Once again, new pulp on top of the old pulp, and we continue. And to demonstrate my less work six cloth method, this goes forward, this goes over, the spent cloths go on top. Now, because my bowl is full, we're going to put this into bottles, and to keep this from dripping on my countertop, I'm going to set it back, but not a little bit, a lot. If you set it back just a little, you will forget, and you'll damage your tray. So set it back a lot and let's fill some bottles. I'm filling it from the back side so the camera can get a good look. And I'm leaving 10% to top off with either distilled water or filtered water. So let's make more juice. Now we'll pull the tray forward, make sure it's seated on the tray properly. Put two more cloths in the press. Centered left to right. Centered front to back, adjust it if necessary. And notice how on the whole health foundation model, and also the Norwalk model, you can reach in and adjust it all the way back, back it off a little bit. And we'll continue putting new pulp on top of the old pulp. Not more than two scoops. Put it into a tight package. Now these patties are getting very, very thick, so from now on I'm going to put only one scoop on top. 
We don't want the patty to get too thick. Pass that all the way. Now what I'm going to do with my spent pulp is I'm going to form it into a tighter package and I'm going to press it again to demonstrate how the Whole Health Foundation Premium Model can make 10% more juice. And that's because the bottom base plate is solid. It will never crack. It will never break. And that's why it has a lifetime warranty. The good thing about the bottom base plate is the parts are interchangeable with a Norwalk juicer. So if you already have a Norwalk juicer, you can buy the base plate and improve your juicer. So, we'll put in our last two cloths. Centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. And we'll continue packaging the spent pulp into tight packages. Because I'm going to demonstrate how you can get 10% more juice using the Whole Health Foundation Premium Model Juicer. I pull that under two or three times. Take a look at my folding technique. Have it folded under so that it minimizes slippage. And we'll do that in both directions. It adds that all the way. Now, as you can see, I've repackaged the spent pulp into three double packets. And I'm going to use a measuring beaker to show how much more juice we can get using a Whole Health Foundation Premium Model Juicer that has the solid bottom plate. So make sure that's on there properly. We'll put two repackaged pulp cloths in here. We're going to center it left to right, center it front to back, adjust it if necessary. It's very important to have it in the center. All the way back, back it off a tiny bit. As soon as I get some traction, I'm going to advance it all the way. Well, there we have four ounces so far. We'll put in two more cloths full of repackaged pulp. Tight fit, but we'll get it in there. Make sure your tray's on there properly. Center it, left to right. Center it front to back, adjust it if necessary. All the way back, and as soon as I get juice flow, I'm going to back it off, like now. And then as soon as we get traction between the two quads, we we'll advance it a little bit more. There's nine ounces. We'll put in our last two cloths full of pulp. Here we have 16 ounces. Looks like we're going to get about 18 ounces out of this repackaged juice. And I want to remind you that your most valuable nutrients are in your last 10% of any juice press. Advance it all the way. There's 18 ounces and soon we're going to overflow, so I'm going to stop this. I could get more juice out of that, but my container's going to overflow. So I'll pour this into the juice container. It looks like it's too full, so I'll pour that into bottles and then put that in the last bottle. Alright, from this batch of juice it looks like we've got 11 bottles plus enough for a taste test. So my next step is going to be to top these off with distilled water. Alright, as you can see I have 11 bottles of juice from this juicing session plus enough for a taste test. And I'll remind you that one of these bottles, more than one of these bottles, was from processing the repackaged spent pulp. So let's do a taste test. 
So here you are, my friends, another juice that I'm calling the anti-inflammatory spine health juice. Let's give it a taste test. Very delicious, a little on the bitter side because of all the greens, but very, very tasty. I hope you like what you've seen, and if you do, please tell a friend. If you'd like to telephone me, my phone number is 760-753-0321. My email address is developtrust at cox.net, and my webpage is wholehealthfound.com. I'll see you in the next video. Delicious.